All right, today we are going to do an iPad Air 2 charge port. So I'm tired of seeing the charge ports coming in with pulled pads. There's no, no reason for that. So we're gonna walk through how to successfully get one of these flex charge ports off safely without pulling pads and then get a new one on. So any charge port you know, problem first starts with, you know, why are you thinking you need a new charge port? A lot of times the charging system itself in these lightning port devices um, can fail, not because of the charge port. So you have to kind of ask some questions. Um, the first question is, does it have physical damage? So if you see a charge port with physical damage, then yeah, that's what the problem is. So let's take a look at the candidate that we have here uh, under the microscope, and we're gonna check uh, for physical damage. So I'll pull this out and let's look at the port. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that is, in fact, I think that's the worst physical damage that I've ever seen in a charge port. So that's definitely what's going on there. That's, that's pretty bad. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and replace the, uh, the charge port on this. So, um, you know, on, especially on the airs, the air one and air two, you really have to get it up off the battery or you're gonna cause a lot of, uh, a lot of problems, so I isolate the battery. There's a lot of tools for that. I just use a business card. And the good news on this one, Air 2, the charge port is right here on the top of the board. So we can kind of operate it on it right here. We'll pull off a sticker. And I'm going to use an iron that has a big fat wide tip. So let's heat up that iron. Now here's what I think is the, is the, the key to, to getting through these things off, is to add a lot, you know, kind of more than you think, solder on top of the connector and work that in to kind of reflow these joints using your leaded solder, which will have a lower melting temperature than the lead free that's on there. So we'll do that. So I've got some solder that I'm just going to feed into these joints. And I'm trying to reflow these joints. You could use chip quick to get it uh, even lower of a melting temperature to get this connector off. Um, but then you kind of have to worry about the integrity of your new connector. All right, from here, I'm going to try and just gently lift the connector. So I'm going to try first to just remove it with an iron because that would be easier than having to use hot air. So I'm just going to kind of lift. and just sort of let it come up. Super easy, what could be easier than that? Let's pull this off. All right, now let's just add a little bit of flux and reflow those joints under there these pads I guess. One thing that I, that is a little bit of a tip is to try to avoid tinning those gold squares. Those gold squares are going to be your reference point for your uh, new connector and they're just a lot easier to see when you don't accidentally uh, tin them. All right so that looks great. No pulled pads there. Now if we want we can you know, use some braid and take off the the lead-free uh, solder that's still on there so that the entire joint will be in easy to work with leaded solder. But you could probably just skip that step and go on ahead. Since this is a video, we'll do it. Okay. 
Okay, then we'll add back a little bit of leaded to tin these because ultimately when we place the new connector, we're going to be trying to uh, pull up the uh, solder on the pads up through the connector. Not really, we're not really painting the new connector on top of the old one. All right, good enough. I'm going to clean that off with a Q-tip and alcohol. Just to get rid of the old adhesive on there. Okay, now we'll have to do the, um, we're going to pull out the rest of our connector. I've actually never seen an air tube connector. So let's take a look. Right, what does this thing look like here at the port? So this is, you know, fairly straightforward stuff. Let's see what this looks like. All right, I'm guessing these are speakers. Usually the speakers are attached to the, somewhere near the charge port on iPad Air, iPad Mini. And then we've got some screws. I have to pull that over here a little bit. I'll use my trusty refrigerator magnets for screw management on this. Now on the iPad mini, there's some hidden screws that anchor this thing to the frame. So we'll check to see if there's more than just these four obvious screws or not. Nope, comes straight out. All right, there's our old port. Man, that is a nightmare. All right, let's grab a new airport. Airport, I love it. Huh. <laughs> okay, I'll go ahead and pull off the adhesive tabs because this looks pretty straightforward to install. Now, iPad Air 1 charging problems are almost never the charge port, so we're finding that's really complex. It looks like the iPad Air, um, you know, hey, my Air doesn't charge, has, has some strange effects where the Air will charge okay when it's off, um, but when it gets up past um, like 1% charge, then it will not turn on, um, or it'll, it'll sort of like boot loop at the Apple logo and it won't, won't turn on all the way. Um, so I started troubleshooting that a little bit and it's pretty, it seems like it's pretty complex. I, I'm thinking right now, and I could be wrong as we do more research, that it could be a failure of the um, power management chip to hand off charging while in an off state to charging while on. Um, I saw that in a iPhone 5S that came in as a totally dead, no power on 5S. Um, and it had a short on a line in the power chip that I did some research reading, reading some um, uh, whatever those things are called, data sheets on the, uh, on the chip. And it looks like that function of transferring uh, charging while off to charging while on was damaged in that power management chip and shorted the entire the entire chip out and therefore the device. Um, so I'm I'm wondering, you know, how U2 chip seems to be really sensitive to failure. If maybe also um, the uh, the air power management chip um, could similarly just get a defect within the chip of that particular function. We'll go ahead and snug those in there. That little connector doesn't look totally 
100%, but hopefully we can make it behave. There we go. All right, now we're gonna just finish this job up and see, hopefully this is the source of this one's charging problem just because it so clearly had um, a um, <laughs> obvious physical damage. So we'll put a little bead of flux under here because our goal is to pull this um, solder on the pad up through the connector, not not really painting on top as much as pulling it up from underneath. So we'll just follow our little windows to find the, the right spot. And kind of adjust this on there. I think it wants to be a little bit further over than this thing wants to go. Have to use the old finger. And you can kind of look under there to try to see the actual pad. And that's what's really important there. All right, so I'm holding that in place, and now I'm going to use that same big iron to kind of get it started, but then I'm going to switch, I think, to a smaller iron to, uh, to do these joints. So let me just sort of tack it down in a few places. Okay, so I'm going to switch to old trusty mini hot tweezers. You know, you could just run a, you know, run this tip down here and be fine. But I like to see um, that each joint gets um, gets made. I like to see it kind of flow up from underneath, so I can see that pad under there, and I press it down. I want to see it sort of flow up through that hole. Because you can have like strange effects if you get a couple of these as cold joints. And, and those are just a real pain, you know, where you'll, it might charge okay, but then it doesn't like seem to recognize the, the charger, that sort of thing. It says it's, you know, accessory not supported, or you could have an, you know, an audio problem. So I like to just kind of confirm, just with my own eyes, it doesn't take more than a few seconds that I'm really getting a joint on each one of these. Okay, now let's clean up the bridging. There was a little bit too much solder on here. And again, I just want to press down on each one of these and make sure that each pad is pressed to and making a connection on the bottom. So you don't even have to paint these all the way, you know, you can just use a lot less solder on the tip than I had on these and you can just see the little circle connection from above the flex to the pads below. Okay, let's see if that works. So this is, this is straightforward. There's no reason to pull pads on these things. This is a job that really every, every general repair shop should be perfectly able to do. Let's move down a couple of these that are just a little tall, just so they don't stick up on something. All right. So let me grab my screen here. And 
and let's see what happens. Just make sure it's dry. I'm going to put a little piece of Captain tape over the joints. I'll put my screen on first and then I'll put back on the battery connector. I just taped the battery screw to the battery itself so that I don't lose it on the <coughs> during the repair. So we're going to put that battery screw back in, take out the business card. Screw the board back down onto the battery. All right, now I would predict this to be pretty dead. So we're really gonna have to see whether or not it's charging by um, looking at its um, consumption of current. So let me grab a charger. All right, so it's consuming 2.42 amps. So that is charging. And I can see my, I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see. <laughs> my battery symbol. Oh, well, it's really tough to see. There you go. See that battery symbol? So there you go. This is consuming um, uh, 2.49 um, amps of charging current that should be um, should be fine and we will expect this to charge up and be totally fine so that's how you do um, any um, flex based charge port job don't fool pat no reason for that